Some changes have been made to Singapore's transboundary haze pollution bill, and these include harsher penalties and a broader definition of who is deemed to be the owner of the plot of land where the fire is occurring. Well, these changes were tabled in Parliament by Environment and Water Resources Minister Vivian Balakrishnan. The changes were made following public feedback after a month-long month consultation. Monica Kotwani has more. When it was first unveiled early this year, the draft's transboundary haze pollution bill proposed a fine of up to $300,000 for those found guilty. Following public feedback, penalties have increased to up to $100,000 for every day that the haze occurs in Singapore. For example, if the haze persists at an unhealthy level and evidence shows it's caused by three days of burning, culprits can be fined up to $300,000. There was a sense that you know we needed to increase the overall level of deterrence. Uh, and this was one way to do that. Um, because otherwise you have the position where the guy says, well, since I've already uh, caused haze on one day, I might as well do more of it. Should the foreign-based director of the errant company be in Singapore, for example, the court can now require him to remain in the country to give evidence or more information. A narrow definition of landowner in the draft bill also raised concerns, especially for countries where a third party may be operating a particular plantation. In this case, the bill also now defines the owner of the land to include anyone with a valid license or permit to carry out operations, or one who has an agreement with the landowner. But the bill also allows accused parties who have taken measures to stop or prevent the fires to use this as a defence. We need effective collaboration, cooperation between governments. We need to share information. We need to share the results of our investigation. Dr. Balakrishnan says he hopes irresponsible behaviour that causes the yearly problem will be deterred with a network of agencies working together with existing legislation. Uh, still on the topic of the haze, we have Mr. Chua Chin Wei. He's a Deputy Director and Fellow Environment and Resources at the Singapore Institute of International Affairs. Thank you for joining us. Oh, Chinway, thanks for joining us. Thank We've you. just heard about some changes or proposed changes to sort of uh, toughen the laws. You know, uh, So do you think this will, will give uh, the bill more bite? Yeah, I think uh, without doubt there will be a bigger bite. Um, if you look at the uh, draft bill that was first circulated um, early part of the year for public consultation, uh, it calls for a um, penalty amount of uh, ranging $300,000 to about $450,000. And in its revised form uh, currently, um, it's calling for an upper limit of up to uh, $2 million for each offence. So that represents almost a four to five time increase from the original level. So yes, definitely there is a bigger bite uh, right now. Mm -hmm. Right, on the topic of those harsher penalties, the bill actually aimed to expose guilty parties liable to civil action by affected individuals, companies or industries as well. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think that's definitely a good uh, provision. Um, according to some estimates, the economic loss, say, from uh, one week of uh, disruption of haste, uh, is estimated to be uh, in the range of, um, say, about $1 billion. And these damages are suffered by businesses as well as uh, individuals. And for businesses, um, they could have ways to uh, so-called um, gauge how much uh, profits were lost. And then especially for the individuals, um, there could be those who are sick, elderly, aggrieved by the haze. So it's definitely useful uh, to have this um, law to allow them to be represented, to seek a recourse uh, with the uh, companies. Mm -hmm. Well, the bill also now defines the owner of the land to include anyone with a valid license or a permit to carry out those operations or uh, even one who has an agreement with the land owner. So uh, will this help address the concerns? Because uh, we know that the land concession issues in Indonesia can be quite complicated. Yeah, I think to a certain extent, it will help to address the situation. Um, we all know that the so-called overlapping concession is really as an outcome of a um, certain bureaucratic process within Indonesia. Uh, different levels of government at different ministries can uh, issue land title to different parties on the same plot of land. So it's definitely useful uh, for the legal definition um, to be written, uh, to cast a bigger net so that not just the uh, landowners, but also the related parties can be uh, brought up to task. Right. Uh, Chin Wei, you know, the, the minister pointed out in that report that uh, there has to be effective collaboration between governments. It's not just a Singapore problem, it's a problem for ASEAN as well uh, to actually you know, ratify perhaps this transboundary uh, uh, haze agreement. 
What can the region actually do to find a long-term solution, though? I think in the longer term, uh, the region firstly need to work um, based on a multi-stakeholder approach. So that will involve uh, governments, regional governments, um, private sector that are operating on the ground, and also the uh, NGO sectors that are able to help raise productivity or improve um, certain livelihood conditions for the local people. And uh, in the longer term, it's definitely useful to study whether if um, certain technology uh, can be adapted to help, say, monitor um, certain compliance to the law. I think that will certainly help the whole industry uh, to shape up to be more sustainable. Mm -hmm. But as we know, it's really not an individual problem. So on that note, how do you think ASEAN has handled this whole situation thus far? I think so far, ASEAN has handled it in a fair and measured way. Well, at least under the uh, Transparent Haste Agreement, there are provisions to set up some sort of a coordinating centre. And there's also a provision to set up a transboundary pollution fund uh, that can study ways to control the haze. So I think, um, by and large, um, with greater, there, is, there will be so-called um, greater room for the various uh, stakeholders to come together to explore uh, more effective uh, transboundary uh, solutions. Okay. All right, Chen Wei, well, thanks so much for coming in this Thank evening. You. Chua Chen Wei, the Deputy Director, Fellow Environment and Resources at the Singapore Institute of International Affairs.